Welcome to Today in Prophecy Daily News in 15 minutes or less. I'm Tom Hughes. A uh, big story uh, comes from yesterday. The Georgia school shooting, listen, it's an absolute tragedy. Uh, by now, everybody has heard about it. 14-year-old boy uh, is the suspect. Uh, there's, he's going to be tried as an adult, but the whole thing is just an absolute tragedy. It's awful. And I, I want to say this um, because there's so much that we could say about this. But I just want to say this. We need to be reminded that Jesus, he, he uh, came into this world to save us from our sins. I, I get asked often as a pastor or as a speaker, why do bad things like this happen? Bad things happen to good people. Why is there evil in the world and so forth? And, and I'll say, well, this is what the Bible says. You go back to Genesis and you say, well, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve and so forth. And then uh, sin entered into the world. And as soon as I bring in sin and I bring in the serpent and Eve, Adam and Eve and uh, making this decision that was sinful in and of itself with the temptation of the serpent, uh, God warned that death was going to come into this world. Sin entered this world. And because of that, it happened exactly as the Bible did say that death entered into the world in sin and pain and suffering. As soon as I say that, they'll say, well, don't bring the Bible into the conversation. That's all I'm going to hear about. I want to know why there's, why there's all these tragedies that happen. Well, here's why it happens, because... Let's go back. I don't want to hear about the book of Genesis. I don't want to hear about these things. I want to know why God is so mean. Listen, this is what the, I don't want to hear about what the Bible says. Well, how am I going to give you a biblical answer if I can't tell you what the Bible says? Listen, the whole thing is awful. And it's a reminder that Jesus came to redeem us. He came to save us. He knows that this world is, is a fallen and bad things happen to everybody. Bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. Um, and you start looking at from that perspective, and it's understanding that this is not the world that God created us to be in. He created a perfect environment, placed Adam and Eve in it, and then everything went south from there when the devil was invited into this world, and that's what we have. Um, but it's horrible, and I would encourage you to pray. Uh, people say, uh, that's such a cop-out, say pray, we need gun laws or whatever. Listen, guns don't kill people. Uh, people kill people. Um, it's, it's the heart of man is deceitful and wicked, the Bible tells us. And again, so we have this wickedness that is in this world. We have tragedy. Look at, you, you, you look at what kind of home was this 14-year-old boy raised in? I don't know. You know. Maybe it's a good home. Maybe it wasn't. But you start looking at the whole spiritual dynamic. It's absolutely awful. And it's also a reminder of the days that we live in where lawlessness will abound. We have mass confusion that is brought into the schools by school districts, by school unions, uh, telling them you're not really a boy if you're a boy, you're not really a girl if you're a girl. You can act like a cat if you think you're a cat. We have absolutely awful things that have happened at the same time we've kicked God out. And we have the answers, and the Lord is the answer. Uh, but I want to encourage you to, to, to be praying and remember the people that are stuck, struck by this tragedy. Unfortunately, this isn't the end. There's going to be more of these things. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. That's what I would have to say. All right, well, let's move on with some other news. Uh, this is going to go along with the election. All right, this is a uh, young lady. She asked Alexa, you know, Alexa's always listening. Check this out. She asked, asked Alexa about voting in the election that is coming up and watch the answer from Alexa. Check this out. Alexa, why should I vote for Donald Trump? I cannot provide content that promotes a specific political party or a specific candidate. Alexa, why should I vote for Kamala Harris? While there are many reasons to vote for Kamala Harris, the most significant may be that she is a strong candidate with a proven track record of accomplishment. As the first female vice president, Harris has already broken down a major gender barrier, and her career in politics has been characterized by a commitment to progressive ideals and a focus on helping disenfranchised communities. I suppose that's the kind of near neutral and banal propaganda that many people query. It's hardly 
extremist, but it's the kind of normalization of a particular political purview, i.e. that in order to save democracy, you have to vote for Kamala Harris in November. Well, actually, if you really care about your republic, it seems that you have to consider the new alliance that's emerging between Trump, Bobby Kennedy, Tulsi Gabbard. Could this be the most powerful anti-establishment alliance in history? There you go. Isn't that rather interesting? Alexa, should I vote for Trump? I can't say. Should I vote for Kamala? Well, of course. I mean, very interesting. And thank you, Russell Brand, for your commentary on that, too. Um, let's get going. Here's this other, this is a short video. But check this out. Uh, again, as you look at what's happening in the news and you realize, all right, these are some of the dynamics that we have going on. You have an illegal alien who was arrested for stabbing a 14-year-old girl, girl, right? Uh, you, you gotta see this, check this out. My news network covers Lake County where the sheriff says a man is under arrest for stabbing a teenager. Investigators say this picture is from when 26-year-old Dimas Gabriel Yanez was taken into custody. Deputies tell us he was in the process of cutting his hair to change his appearance when he was arrested. And they say Yanez stabbed a 14-year-old girl who was watching her brother's baseball game in Lowell over the weekend. She has been treated and was released from the hospital. The sheriff says Yanez was deported to Honduras in 2018. Investigators believe he's been involved in criminal activity since illegally returning to the U.S. Uh, so there you go. Trump had him deported in 2018. Uh, but what do we know? She's let back in by the border czar, Kamala Harris. Uh, these are the real things that we are dealing with. And then, of course, uh, we have all these pro-Hamas uh, demonstrations that are taking place in New York City, of course. Pro-Hamas, pro-Hezbollah. Check out these flags. Uh, just look at, look at a couple of these pictures here. Look at this. There you go. We got our pro-Hezbollah, pro Hamas flags uh, flying over New York City. Now remember, New York City is a city that was, you know, we went, they went through 9-11. Uh, you start looking at these things and you're going, unbelievable how all of these things are going on in this world and the anti-Semitism, how radical it is. And as uh, universities are going, the, the uh, people are going back to school at the universities, we're watching the anti-Semitism only increase. And imagine this, here it is in New York City, a kill the Jews. That's what they're actually saying. But not to be stopped with that, Hamas says it will kill hostages again if the IDF attempts to rescue them. Uh, another warning, but look at this next article. Uh, the IDF eliminates Hamas commander behind the October 7 invasion of Netiv Harasa and the terrorists killed uh, his father in front of their sons on October 7. Absolutely horrific. And yet in New York City, you have a demonstration, a pro-Hamas, a pro-Hezbollah demonstration. Listen, this wickedness really happened. I, so many people have tried to write me and say, you're being deceived. These atrocities didn't actually happen on October 7. It's all actually a made up uh, it's all actually made up and the Jews are tricking the world and the blood libel and all of that stuff. Listen, I've been there. You guys haven't even been there who are saying these things. Go down there with me. Go to Israel with me. In fact, I'm going to be there in a few weeks. Why don't you go over there and visit with me? And if you're an LGBTQ plus person, you're supporting it. Listen, go to Gaza. I'll even go down there with you. See how well that goes. Let's deal with the reality for what it really is. But my guess is nobody's going to take me up on that. Uh, but listen, Canada is waking up. They realize that there is a problem. Canada is turning away more foreigners amid rise in anti-immigration sentiment. I guess Canada is catching on to what is going on uh, over in Europe, and they're realizing people are pretty ticked off about it. Got to wonder, though. Uh, Canada, listen, ratio, ref uh, let, let me go down here. Uh, Canada is taking steps, both official and unofficial, to curb the number of people coming into the country, highlighting the way in which immigration has become a political flashpoint ahead of a federal election. In other words, what's his name? Trudeau, right? 
Trudeau probably wants to get reelected. Well, let me deal with the immigration problem, kind of like uh, Newsom here in California. Or what is all of a sudden, uh, what, what's her name? Uh, Kamala Harris, right? <sighs> Uh, the borders are suddenly trying to remember the commercial we showed you uh, standing in front of Trump's border wall all of a sudden showing the border wall as if she built the wall. No, you let down the wall. You tore it down. Now, all of a sudden, uh, Kamala Harris is starting to say nice things about Israel. Gee, I wonder why she's starting to pretend like she cares about the immigration problem. Listen, these people are liars as it is in Canada. It's going on here. An election is coming up. And, uh, the, the, and, and they're finding out, hey, people aren't too happy about this. Probably the same reason why Mark Zuckerberg said, what, was a week or so ago, um, uh, listen, I, I shouldn't, yeah, the, the um, Biden administration got us to collude in the last election, and we'll never do that again. Yeah, you look at this stuff, you go, you know, what's really going on? Uh, maybe Zuckerberg has seen some poll numbers or something like that. These people... It's not out of the goodness of their heart. They're watching certain things shift. The same thing that we see going on with Trump, as suddenly Trump has, Tulsi, as Russell Brand said, Tulsi Gabbard, he has Elon Musk, he has RFK Jr. He's got these different people coming up on his team. Very interesting dynamic to watch that happen. You have the globalist on the one side and the nationalist on the other side rising up against the globalist. But check this out, in Britain, First ever prison wing dedicated to transgender inmates where criminals enjoy a 10,000 uh, pound games wall, TV screens, and leave their cells whenever they like. Transgender inmates. Boy, I bet that is about as bizarre as you could possibly get. Well, <laughs> I mean, that, that should have been a you can't make this up thing, but nevertheless. Uh, and then we have this last story. Pope Francis, check it out. A dangerous advocate for open borders at the cost of Europe's Christian heritage. Pope Francis has once again positioned himself as a staunch advocate for open borders, declaring in a recent statement that rejecting migrants is a serious sin. It must be said clearly there are those who work systematically and with every means possible to repel migrants. This is a grave sin. This statement, however, is not merely about promoting compassion. It represents a dangerous agenda that threatens to undermine Europe's Christian heritage and sovereignty. The Marxist Pope's call for more immigration, particularly from predominantly Islamic country, countries, raises serious concerns about the future of Europe and the survival of its Christian identity. Let me say this before we wrap it up. If you know the Bible in John chapter 12, uh, Mary, she anoints Jesus with her costly perfume. It was, a, it was about a year's wage worth of per perfume, 300 denarii. And she anoints Jesus with her costly perfume, 300 denarii, right? Year's wage. So let's say you make $50,000 a year, $50,000 worth of perfume. You know what Judas said? Judas said, what a waste. This perfume could have been sold and the money given to the poor. Uh, but then it says right in there, Judas didn't say this because he was a kind-hearted soul and cared about the poor. He said this because he was a thief. He used to take the money out of the bag. That's what these people are. They don't really care about the migrants. No, they're manipulating everything for their advantage, for their own power. The worse they make it, the more powerful they get. It's virtue signaling. Judas was a virtue signaler. And that's exactly what this Pope is and all of these other radical leftists that are here in the United States of America, Canada, Europe, Australia, New Zealand. That's what they are. Hey, listen, join me September 8th. That's coming up this Sunday, just a few days a week. Uh, John Haller uh, at 412 Church in Temecula, California. Join me live 5 o'clock p.m. And it's going to be absolutely terrific. If you're in San Diego, Riverside, Orange County, come on out. Join me, even Los Angeles County. It's a long drive, but come on out. It's going to be great. 5 p.m. Sunday night, September 8th, John Haller and myself. Also, um, we have uh, our conference coming up uh, this November 8, and 9, and 10 at 412 Church in Temecula. And uh, Eric Stackelbeck is going to be joining us for our conference in November. Check it out. Register. God bless you guys. Uh, see ya.